Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Alicia and I'm the owner of Alicia Be Creative. And today I'm back with another tutorial, but this is not a Tumblr tutorial. So I got this really beautiful piece of acrylic that I purchased off of Amazon. And I had originally purchased it with the thought of just having it as like a clear piece of acrylic that sat on my desk while I'm crafting. But I decided to kind of change up my idea and kind of make it like a logoed center plaque like desk lay piece. I don't really know what you'd call one of those, but essentially it's meant to remain on my main desk with um, my computer and things as a way to just kind of spruce up that area because it is pretty drab and kind of boring over there. And I've been trying to figure out new ways to kind of make it a little bit more lively over there. So I'm going to walk you through the process of how I glitter and epoxy and create the design for my sort of template desk tray, I guess we'll kind of call it. And of course, all of the products that I use today will be listed and linked down in the description box down below. You can even find some discount codes there as well, which will save you a bit of money. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's video. <music> Okay, so we are starting with this 24 by 12 inch acrylic piece that I purchased off, as, off of Amazon. It was about, I wanna say 20-ish dollars to purchase it. And like I mentioned in my intro, I had originally thought that this would be sort of like a clear sort of covering for my desk to kind of help with my filming and editing. I've since changed that. And of course, we're going to create this beautiful logoed design that will be helpful to place on my desk. But also I find that this could really be a great piece to have at vendor markets and things that displays my logo, all of my social media information, as well as my website to just have up in my tented area. So we're gonna prep this just like we would any other piece of acrylic, whether working with a you know small keychain piece. So I'm just going to sand and scuff up the surface after removing that paper covering. Then go ahead and get this wiped down with a bit of 91% rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. Once I've done that, I did take this to go be spray painted. So I actually spray painted this outside and unfortunately forgot to film this, but the colors that I used were French, uh, French lilac, as well, or Dreamy Lavender, <laughs> the Solstice Blue, and Sweet Pea are the three colors. I did start with a white base initially before I went into adding the colors on top that I decided that kind of went with my logo. So what I am going to do here is we're going to get the glitter applied. And so I have multiple glitters here. I have Unicorn Sneeze from my Aisha Creations. I have, if you will, from my, if you will, bundle collection from Vinyl Gallery. I also have Marlena and that is a Myra Makes It glitter as well as Melrose, which is a Maestra Creations glitter as well. So I'm going to start with a really heavy hand of glue here. You could use epoxy. I just decided that glue was going to be my best bet. I was running low on my epoxy and my epoxy was coming later that day. So I just decided to do this with glue. So I'm really going to put a very generous amount of glue and really smooth everything out to make sure I get a nice layer of this Mod Podge down. The first layer of glitter, I'm gonna base everything just with a light sprinkle of Unicorn Sneeze, which is a beautiful translucent white glitter that really just will kind of build the sort of dimension I'm looking to get with all of my colors and sort of this swirl. Now going in with, if you will, which is a sort of uh, pastel blue colored glitter. It is a little bit translucent and transparent, so I will come back and add another blue glitter in some of those sections as well. And now we're gonna go into Marlena, which has a beautiful mix of pink in here. I love the different cuts of color, so it really does help to build sort of that dimensional look so it's not all of the same um, size cut of glitter. Uh, and then finally, we'll go in with some Melrose. So Melrose is a beautiful like lilac color that really just matches my overall logo. So my logo colors, my brand colors are sort of like a, a pink, blue, purple, and gold. And so that was kind of the basis for how I wanted to create this logo sign. So it does represent me and my brand. So now you'll see that I'm going back in with another blue color. I wanted to deepen it up a little bit. And the if you will was a great addition to up against my pink, but I felt like it was getting a little bit lost 
uh, in the sections that were just blue. So I added thick tiff there to just sort of add to that blue section. And now that I have most of my glitter applied, I'm just going to now sort of take my hands and the acrylic sign and just kind of shift everything back and forth, cover up some of those sections that still just have glue exposed before I go back in with some additional glitter to cover up any spots that are still just sort of that glue. This is all glittered. And of course you guys know I would not throw away all this beautiful glitter. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in a cup and use this for a mold or something later on. So I did let this sit for about an hour or two and then did just brush off the excess glitter into the trash can. Um, I didn't spray seal this just because I had ran out of clear spray paint. I seem to be out of everything this week, <laughs> go figure. But I didn't really mind if some of the colors started to, uh, you know, migrate into one another because again, these are my brand colors and because there's still those pastel shades. I knew that even though I had, you know, brushed off quite a bit, I probably wouldn't have a whole lot of um, movement of my glitter. And I'd be able to control that a little bit better as I'm epoxying this. So I am using Flynn Sisters uh, Artist Cure Epoxy here. I would recommend using just a regular setting epoxy. Don't try and use Fast Set because you do need quite a bit of epoxy. And what will happen if you try and use something that's a Fast Set is that that Fast Set could start to heat up and start to cure before you're really done with applying all of it to the actual piece that you're working on. So I always stress using a regular set epoxy when you're making these kinds of signs. So I mixed up about... 120 mls of the artist cure epoxy and so i'm just going to spread that really evenly this is just my first coat so i do expect i'll need another coat before this really will be smooth so i'm just going to go around and make sure there's no epoxy along the sides that's stripping off clean that up and then of course torch this and let this sit until it's cured once this is cured, and of course I'll wait overnight for this, I'm gonna go in with my second coat of epoxy here. And in this part of the epoxying process, I am gonna add sort of my Milky Way elements. That's just going to enhance the look of my sign here. So I've just applied a probably about half of that additional 120 mLs of epoxy onto the acrylic sign here. I then have three other medicine cups along the side here that I'm going to evenly pour the remainder of the epoxy into these cups, about 10 mLs or so. I didn't have a whole lot left in the cup, but I'm gonna go ahead and just evenly pour those in, and then I'm going to add my additives. So before I do so, I'll torch real quick just to make sure I don't have any bubbles that are going to give me some issues later and then I'm going to go ahead and add all of my additives to my cups of epoxy. So I'm starting with Alumalite's white epoxy dye. I'm going to do one drop of that. Then I have Marabou Rainbow Ink. I'm going to add a few drops of that. It's going to give that epoxy a real beautiful shimmer and glittery look. And then I am using Brass Alcohol Ink from Pinata, a couple drops of that in that third cup. I like the brass over the gold just because I do find that the brass actually mimics more gold when you put it in epoxy. It kind of lightens up a little bit. And the gold from Pinata for me is just a little bit too yellow and not really what I was going for. So I'm going to evenly mix those up, make sure everything is thoroughly mixed, and then we'll get into applying our lines of epoxy just like we would for a traditional Milky Way on a cup. The only difference here is that we're not going to have the turner to help us sort of spin and spread out these colors. So we're going to have to use a heat gun in order to be able to spread this white um, ink out or this white epoxy out. So just a few lines of that throughout. I just used all of it because this is a pretty large sign and I knew that I probably would need all of the colorant. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my heat gun and just start to blow out those lines of epoxy. Make sure nothing looks too goopy and too sort of bunched up. Really just trying to allow that white epoxy dyed uh, epoxy sort of spread out and just create a little bit of movement. I don't want a whole lot of movement because we are going to add some other colorants to here. I want to keep it pretty pretty straight and pretty even in these sections. And after I'm done with the heat, we'll go in with the rainbow ink and I'm just going to kind of drizzle that all the way on. What I loved about adding this Marabou rainbow ink to my epoxy is that 
on the actual sign, it gives this beautiful shimmer on top of the glitter that just further enhances the sparkle, which I just absolutely love. And so it is a very rainbow look. So it shifts to all of the different colors, which I really do think plays very well with the white on here, as well as the base of glitter colors that we have. So I'm just going to evenly spread that out. I am also spreading out some of those white lines as well with my hand before I go in with my brass alcohol ink. This brass alcohol ink is meant to just be a little bit of a highlighter because I do, of course, have gold as part of my brand, although I do deviate mostly to these three colors usually. I wanted to still showcase a little bit of a hint of that color because that does it is also part of my brand color. So just a little bit there. And then I'm going to go back in with Groovy Queen, which is a beautiful shifty gold color from my Asia creations and along those gold brass lines that we drew in with the epoxy I'm going to go over those sections with a little bit of this gold glitter to just further enhance and bring out the gold I do love that this particular glitter does shift to like pink and blue which I think really just plays well again with the base glitter color so I am going to do a pretty generous amount just in the sections that I again had that brass alcohol ink and then we're going to go ahead I'll do a final torch on this and then I will go ahead and let this cure overnight until um, I'm able to sort of touch it again and be able to move on to the next the next step so now we are in Cricut Design Space so it's the next day and I've gone ahead and I did upload my logo into Cricut Design Space and although I chose you know a, a cut setting versus a print then cut it came out really sort of jaggedy and I knew that that would really show some really harsh weird edges so I just decided to take what I knew is my actual um brand fonts and I just went ahead and recreated this as an SVG file just to make it a little bit easier because I knew it would look a little bit weird uh, when I tried to cut my logo that's saved in my files when I tried to cut that um, on a piece of vinyl. So I'm using Amber Light, which is the logo for Leisha B. And then this bottom creative section is a font called Catherine, both of which can be found in Creative Fabrica. Um, I know some people don't like to shell, share like their fonts. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty transparent. You know, if you love the font, certainly feel free to download them for yourself. Um, so I did go ahead and just kind of recreate that and use that background original upload as my basis to make sure things pretty much lined up. I'm now just going to make sure that this is all centered accordingly and um, evenly spaced. And then I'll go ahead and attach this together because this will be its own, you know, cut file. And I want to make sure that I kind of have this all centered so that I might go to add the other pieces of this. This doesn't become misaligned. So I'm going to go ahead and again, get this attached together, making sure too that you do weld your, uh, you know, your calligraphy font so that you don't have any of those weird cut files. I'm now going to go ahead and go into my files and upload the social media graphic that I just created in Canva. Remove any of the white background and any sections that I want to be sort of cut out. We'll upload this as a cut file, of course, and then I'm going to add this to my canvas. So this was just, I have the pro version of Canva, so I just went into Canva, found all of the logos and just put them in a line, if you will, all spaced out accordingly, and then just saved that um, transparent background file so that I could upload it into Cricut Design Space. So super simple, um, something easy you can typically do. Of course, you can go to Etsy and grab these as well. You can go to Google probably and find them and get a cut file for them as well. The final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my uh, website down at the bottom here and so I'm just trying to find a font that kind of works for me so I did finally land on a font that was just already in Cricut Design Space and I just decided to make everything uppercase because I felt that it looked a little bit better and I've made that 11 inches wide so that it is the same length as my logo area up top the Leisha Beast would all lines up the next thing I'm doing is literally just beginning to make sure that everything is evenly spaced as far as and centered, if you will, centered horizontally. So I'm just going back and forth and just making sure everything's centered horizontally. This last section here that you're seeing me do is because I knew that this was 12 inches, um, like top to bottom 12 inches, I wanted to create a little bit of space between my actual logo and all of the social media information down at the bottom. I wasn't sure 
kind of what this would look like when I put it together. So I created a little bit of space there in case I wanted to take up all the space from top to bottom and not have everything centered. You're gonna see that I end up cutting out a section of this anyway when we go to apply the vinyl, but I wanted to have that space there just so that I had a little bit of wiggle room to remove that space if I needed to. So we're back here and our tray or our sign I should say is now cured. I'm gonna go ahead and do, do sort of a rough sand all the way around, really focusing and making sure to get a nice smooth surface. There wasn't too much that needed to be sanded as far as on the actual sign. Most of it was pretty smooth other than over those glittered areas where we added the groovy queen. But what definitely needed some attention to detail was the edges of this sign. So I'm gonna take my um, craft knife and just scrape off all the excess epoxy that just ended up on the edges of this sign here just to clean everything up and then go back with my uh, sanding block to just make sure that everything is smoothed out around the edges. That way when I go to add my final coats of epoxy on this, everything is smooth and when you pick up the sign you don't have those rough jagged edges. Then we'll go ahead and of course clean this off from all the sanding debris with some 91% rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. And we can go ahead now and get ready to weed all of our decals. So I ended up cutting the image that I showed you in Cricut Design Space. I cut that in some Tech Wrap Bubble Free Chrome vinyl. This is the pink purple vinyl. I have used it before in a previous tutorial. Um, I really do love this vinyl. It's much easier to work with than some of the other sort of chrome metallic vinyls that can really give you a super hard time as far as leaving creases and um, you know wrinkles and things and scratches in them when you're trying to use them. This is really user friendly and so if you haven't tried this or haven't picked this up, I definitely encourage you to. Of course, you guys know I'll link it down in the description box, but if you're someone who loves the look of chrome vinyl but cannot stand to work with it, I definitely encourage you to try this vinyl because it really is easy to work with and very easy to weed. And I was able to cut this on the traditional vinyl cutting setting, which is perfect without having to change the pressure or anything. So I'm gonna continue to weed this out. I did have to, I ended up pulling up my C for the com, dot com at the end. So I had to replace that. I realized it had come up when I was removing the excess vinyl, but I'm just gonna continue to weed the rest of the vinyl here. That way we can get this applied to our acrylic sign. Again, I just wanted to share with you that this is like a super easy vinyl to work with. Um, I have it in a few colors, but the purple, this purple just seems to be one I gravitate towards for sure. Uh, I just really love, I love, love, love purple. It definitely has become like my new favorite color. Um, so I really just love how this is going to play so nicely and so well on top of the acrylic sign. So now with everything all weeded and ready to go, we can go ahead and add some transfer tape to this. That way we can get this applied. So I am using Tech Wrap Crafts transfer tape as well. I have talked about this a couple times already. I do find that this transfer tape is super sticky. Um, what I don't find it very easy, what I don't find that I love about it is that when you, because it's so sticky, when you go to pull it off, uh, it kind of rolls onto itself. And so it's really hard to then reutilize the piece of transfer tape. But I do love that it does get up those stubborn uh, vinyls that really have a hard time sticking to transfer tape, which is perfect because I love to use some of those vinyls and it's really a pain when your transfer tape doesn't stick to them. So I've gone ahead and pulled that right off of my mat there. And now I'm just going to kind of line things up kind of deciding at this point where I want things placed. And it's at this point that I realized that I don't want that space that I had originally created when I created this in Cricut Design Space. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of cut the logoed section from the social media and website information. And I'm going to do those in two separate sections. That way I can make them closer together. I decided all in all that I did want this to be a little bit more centered in the in the piece as far as from top to bottom versus having it stretch from the top of the actual sign to the bottom of the sign. And so I'm gonna start with the logo section first and I'm just measuring to make sure that this is number one straight and that it is evenly placed in the center of this actual sign, making sure that everything is even before I kind of commit to applying this onto the actual sign. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and peel up a little bit of that um, 
vinyl and then remove the backing by just cutting that off. We'll use the hinge method, of course. It's the easiest way that I find to be able to apply a vinyl decal. And then I'll just use my squeegee tool, just like I was sort of rolling on a piece of vinyl for a full vinyl wrap to be able to roll that backing off and get the rest of the SVG placed onto this sign. Go ahead and remove the transfer tape. And now we're going to go ahead and move to the second part of this. So the bottom section, which is all the social media information as well as my website. So I'm going to cut off the little bit of excess that I have before all of the social media logos because I don't need that anymore since I do want to make this a little bit closer together and more centered from top to bottom. I am still going to leave a little bit of a gap there, but I really want this to be sort of closer to the logo than I had built it in Cricut Design Space. So same method here. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this because the website is the same length as my actual logo. I literally just eyeballed it and just made sure that it was correct as far as not too far over to one side or the other. And then we're just going to hinge method this section down onto the sign as well. Then of course, once we get that done, we'll remove the transfer tape here. And at this point, I'm really satisfied with how this is looking, but you guys know that I can't be done without adding like my signature, which is I have to add leopard print to everything. So I have this really beautiful piece of vinyl. It's a transparent vinyl for my Asia Creations. It's got all these beautiful uh, leopard print pieces with sort of like a water, almost like a watercolor look. What I do love is that this is transparent, which means that it's completely see-through. So it really does lend itself to blend really nicely into the on top of the glittered area if that makes sense and so what i'm doing now is i've just cut off kind of a section of that to kind of start with and i've just cut along the edge of that vinyl to remove any of those pieces that are kind of not whole pieces of leopard print before i start to stick all of the leopard print sections on here i like that it did encompass kind of all of the colors i had some purple i have some blue um, and I have like a gradient of those colors, which I think just continues to add to the overall look that I'm kind of going for. So I'm not going to apply leopard print to the entire um, sign, but I am going to kind of hit those two corners, the top corner and that bottom right left corner, just to kind of almost make it look like it's a swirl, like my logo and social media information is kind of sitting on top of that leopard print swirl. Uh, I had contemplated going back and cutting like leopard print out of uh, textured metallic vinyl and gold, but I didn't think that would play very nicely with the uh, Tech Wrap Craft Purple vinyl. So I decided to go with this, which I think was great because it does have that purple look, but it also kind of gives me some of those other colors, which just again, make some of those other glitters that are part of this sign really stick out and really kind of shine and sparkle. So I'm going to just continue to make this kind of swirl of my leopard print, cutting different sections off and out of the vinyl until I feel that I'm satisfied. I wanted to make sure that the top leopard swirl area was even to the bottom leopard swirl area. And then this goes for its final coat of epoxy. So of course I'm going to use Flint Sisters Artist Cure Epoxy to finish this sign up. This is the final look at this and I'm absolutely in love with this. I cannot wait for this to be fully cured and sitting on top of my table top and to be able to show this off at some of, some of the shows that I hope to be able to do this summer. I hope that you guys did enjoy today's video. Of course, if you loved it, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and you guys know that I will see you again in the next one. Bye!